My initial plan for this video was to start with a look at how I designed the robot and then progress into a step-by-step -step build walkthrough. But that's not what's going to happen. I originally wanted to bring the shell spinner design I had in the works for about a year and a half to Stuart Smallbots of Mass Destruction, but I ran into a lot of issues getting it down to weight. Son of a I decided instead to go back to another design I've been wanting to try, basically the single motor clamper lifter mechanism similar to the one used by Claw Viper on BattleBots. I had already started reworking Son of Gorgor to use this weapon system about a year ago, but also ran into issues there and had to abandon the design. And since I seem incapable of naming a robot something other than Demon Whatever, or after a Guar song or character, I decided to name this thing World Maggot, after the large puppet the band brings on stage to eat members of the audience. For the design process, I started with a very rough sketch on my tablet, then created a spreadsheet with the component weights, dimensions, and prices. I then started to design the robot in Fusion 360. This was really my first time using Fusion, aside from following David Small's Combat Robot Design Tutorial, and eventually I kind of abandoned the CAD as I felt like I wasn't getting through it quickly enough and needed to start building. And this was a mistake. I got my components and material in and started building. As I was building, I noticed the footprint of the robot seemed way too big. I also counted on using my 3D printer and mill to build the robot. However, my printer is totally busted at this point and I still need a lot more practice on the mill to get the kind of machining I needed for the design. A large portion of the time working on this robot was devoted to the lifting and clamping mechanism. Here's another area where if I finished the CAD, I might have caught a major issue. Despite having built one of these mechanisms before, when designing it for World Maggot, I had designed the lifting arms like they were going to be a more standard design with the arm rigidly mounted to the gear. This forced me to go back and remake the lifting arms in the correct style. So if you were watching those previous clips and you couldn't understand what the hell I was doing, well, I didn't either apparently. I was building them like a standard lifter where they were hard mounted to that rear axle and completely forgot that the whole thing with this design is that it's actually the front axle here the one that's going to be holding the clamping gear that enables the lifting gear to engage when this gear stops running this back gear goes and i built it like it was a standard lifter where this gear was engaged but that meant there was zero chance that this clamping gear was ever going to be engaged uh that was that was a pretty big mistake to make on this so going back and redoing some work here okay so here's the full mechanism now you're gonna have to imagine that the servo is back in here it's gonna be driving this first gear when we spin this gear it spins that front gear freely and that's gonna activate the clamping mechanism Ooh, that is like super smooth right now that's nice um so yeah this is gonna activate that clamping mechanism this is gonna be pulled down and then as long as this gear can spin freely, they are going to keep doing that. But once this front gear is jammed, which is going to be either clamping on the other robot, or I am going to put a piece of standoff in between here so that I can bring it down and have it clamp or stick, basically. So once this is restrained, this is kind of hard to show, but then when this back gear spins, it will actually raise the full assembly. If that can't spin, it's going to move the whole thing so that gear stays in place and now orbits around the middle gear there, the back gear in this scenario, but that's actually what makes it lift. So I have a temporary setup. I mean, the gears and the lifting arm is all together. I don't have the claw yet, and I don't have the real electronics. I just have the uh, tiny ESC plugged into the servo here, and the corpse of Son of Gorgor over there, but whatever. We're gonna test this arm here. <laughs> So I have a little bolt going through this first gear, which is going to kind of replicate our claw. So it gets to a point where it can't move any further. Then we'll go the other way and we'll clamp down basically. And there we go. We got our... I love it. <laughs> it's so cool. Starting off today with a little more CAD, some cardboard aided design here. So I am playing around with the claw mechanism for this bot. And this is the first design I had. So it's kind of more of just a straight, I don't know, <laughs> the Candyman hook style thing going on here. But my fear, I'm just lining up the, the hole I traced with the, the axle here, more or less. But my fear is that when it's clamped down, you can see there's not a lot of depth in there. So it may make it awkward with certain robots. So I 
sketched up that version, and that definitely gives us a bigger, you know, like throat area, I guess you'd call it on there, more room for a bot to fit in. Obviously, if something's in the jaws, it's not going to be down that far, it's going to be up to some extent, but yeah, I think that is a more sustainable claw shape, and I think when it's pulled back, that kind of looks cool. So uh, I think this is the shape we're going to go with, so I'm going to cut this out of some aluminum and get it mounted in there. The robot is still on its little like umbilical power coming off of the corpse of Son of Gorgor right now. But I got the claw on and I just wanted to test it out. I threw a one, two, three block there on the front of the forks. I checked it is a pound. Obviously, the weight in it isn't as distributed out as a real ant weight would be. It's pretty compact, but, you know, just for a proof of concept here. With the jaw design sorted out, I then had to go back and deal with the initial issue of the robot's size and therefore its weight. After considering multiple options, I decided to greatly reduce the robot's size by switching from a four-wheel drive system with N20 motors to a two-wheel drive system using Fingertech Silver Sparks. This let me cut off the areas of the bot that were initially flanking the front lifter going from an overall rectangular shape to a more of a capital T shape. I also swapped the 3S battery with two 2S batteries I had used in F1 third previously. These were lower capacity batteries, but also considerably lighter. As it stands, the full parts list for this bot is two Fingertech Robotics and Silver Sparks for drive, using the old style Fingertech wheel hubs, and flip-flop wheels. I don't know if I've ever personally included this in one of my videos, so I figured I'd show it off here. This is the... Uh, flip-flop wheel hack basically i think matt spurk was the one that showed me this initially so these are like dollar flip-flops you can get at walmart so you just get the biggest size they have and you get two of these basically you take the plastic parts out and then um i think he cuts his with scissors but i've always just used a hole saw and just turned it by hand to cut out the uh the wheel diameter so you'll have to drill out the middle a little bigger when you're done with it if you have a, a standard you know thing like this but you know it gives you a centered center i guess yeah you know for the where the axle goes and then you can just cut it out and they work decently well and they're very very cheap to make because you know i'm this is what a two and an eighth i think that i'm making here and if you're doing smaller wheels you can get quite a few out of a single pair so yeah, you get a lot of spares, a lot of backups are easy enough to get most of the time, especially here in Florida, those bins are out like most of the year. So it's really easy to get them on the fly. It actually took me a couple tries to get it just right. And doing it this way, you are going to get like one nasty side to it. So I'm going to take care of that. But I went in and I drilled out the hole in the middle to accommodate the hub. These are the, the bad cuts. You can see the hole in the middle is much smaller. And this one's the one I did by hand and it actually came out terrible. This is another one I did on the drill, and it came out okay, but it's still not very good. And then I got two relatively clean ones, so these will be the ones that I use. I'll probably make a couple spares or just bring flip-flops down there with me with the right size bit. For the batteries, there were two 7.4 volt, 280 milliamp hour LiPo batteries. The receiver is the standard Hobby King six channel receiver. Typically on small bots, I will use a three channel receiver to save weight and space, but I wanted to use channel four for the lifting grabbing mechanism. So I had the spring release and therefore I had to go with the larger receiver. Lifting power is provided by the HXT 12 kilogram metal gear servo and the gears for that whole mechanism were from Servo City. And then all three motors were controlled by Fingertech Tiny ESCs. This includes the servo where I removed the initial control board and replaced it with the Tiny ESC, as I don't believe the actual board will handle 14 volts at all. So I may actually be done with this thing. So I got the, you know, the jaw mechanism functions. And it's all polished up. Everything's basically white on here from the wheels. I did some off-white for some bits of it as well uh, to kind of match the Garolite base, which is technically yellow, but it's really kind of like a manila envelope kind of color. And obviously you got like red lights flashing inside there, but, uh, or green, you know, depending on which way I'm moving things. But 
yeah, so, and then I have, like, the compound eyes drawn there on the front to kind of fit with the maggot theme. Got its mouth. It's all really good, right? It's the mouth. That's so cool. I'm not going to get tired of that anytime soon. I'm really excited about how that looks. Uh, I got some white tape that covers up where the battery leads connect. Yeah, I'm digging this. Like, it's 15.5 ounces, so more than enough, you know, weight left over if I have to make an adjustment to something at the event or if the scale's definitely off of what mine is. But uh, I I'm really happy. I'm really excited to get this thing in the ring. I know it's, you know, it's maybe not going to be the most durable bot. Um, the claw at the top, I'm sure, is probably not going to last against a horizontal spinner. But I could always lock down that front gear and have just the lifting forks. I mean, even the front end, I'm not really sure how it would hold up to getting hit, but we'll see. I'm hoping it gets at least one fight where I could really give it a test of how it's supposed to go before I have to go up against, like, a death spinner. But, yeah, I'm happy.